Hello, welcome to part 3 of Clinical Physiotherapy MCQ series. Let's move to our 11th question. A 22-year-old male was involved in an automobile accident in which he was a passenger pulled out of a burning car. As a result, the patient suffered a brachial plexus injury to the terminal branches of the lateral cord. Which of the following muscle would you not expect this patient to have a problem with? Option A. Biceps. Option B. Crocobrachialis. Option C. Deltoid. Option D. Pectoralis major. And the answer is... Option C. Deltoid. Explanation to this question is... The deltoid muscle is applied by the axillary nerve that originates from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus. All the other muscles are innervated by terminal branches of the lateral cord of the brachial plexus. Moving to our 12th question, following a trauma at the C5 spinal level, a 23-year-old patient was admitted to the hospital. 24 hours later, the patient shows no reflex sensation or voluntary motor activities below the level of injury. These findings indicate Option A. The presence of spasticity Option B. Decerebrate rigidity Option C. Spinal shock Option D. A lower motor neuron lesion And the answer is Option C. Spinal shock Explanation to this question is Spinal shock occurs as a reaction to spinal cord injury and is characterized by an absence of all reflex activities below the level of lesion. Depending on the extent of the lesion, the patient may lose all or some of their sensation and motor activities below the level of lesion. Spacity is associated with a hyperreflexia and increased muscle tone. Spacity would be expected to develop following a spinal shock stage. Decerebrate rigidity involves a sustained contraction of the upper and lower extremities in extension. With a lower motor neuron lesion, the loss of sensation and motor activity would be confirmed to much smaller region, depending on the exact lesion, and would not affect all the level below the lesion. Moving to our 13th question. A physical therapist examines a 22-year-old patient who reports food pain while jogging. The examination shows that the patient has excessive food pronation and forefoot varus. The therapist describes to try a temporary orthotic insert in the patient's running shoes. Which of the following is the most appropriate orthotic insert? Option A. A lateral forefoot post under the fifth metacarsal head. Option B. A lateral rear foot post under the calcaneus placed in an inverted position. Option C. A wedge placed under the instep of the medial foot just beneath the last head of the talus. Option D. A medial post just proximal to first metatarsal head. And the answer is... Option D. A medial post just proximal to the first metatarsal head. Explanation to this question is, pronation of the foot can be caused by a variety of factors including calcaneal eversion and forefoot varus. Correction of pronation by orthosis could include a medial post or wedge placed just proximal to the metatarsal head or medial post under the calcaneus. This approach involves bringing the ground up to meet the foot. A post under the fifth metatarsal head would assassinate the problem, as would a rear foot post placing the calcaneus in an inverted position. If the patient has excessive forefoot varus, a wedge may be placed in the instep in the addition to the medial wedge proximal to the metatarsal head to distribute the load. However, a wedge in the instep by itself would not be the best intervention. Moving to our 14th question, which of the following is the most likely cause of reduced vital capacity in a patient who has quadriplegia at C5, C6 level? Option A. Decreased anterior lateral chest expansion resulting from a paralysis of the external intercostal muscle. Option B. Inability of the patient to generate a negative intrapleural pressure secondary to a de-innervated diaphragm. Option C. A relatively high resting position of the diaphragm resulting from paralysis of the abdominal muscle. Option D. Reduced ribcage 
elevation due to paralysis of the anterior scalene and sternocleidomastoid muscle and the answer is option a decreased anterior lateral chest expansion resulting from paralysis of the external intercostal muscle explanation to this question is the rib cage would not be able to expand normally during inspiration due to the weakness of external intercostal muscles which are innervated by thoracic nerve segments with a spinal cord lesion of c5 c6 level the diaphragm would still receive innervation from phrenic nerve c4 the anterior scalene c4 to c6 would be partially innervated and sternocleidomastoid c2 to c3 would fully innervated the abdominal muscles would not innervated since they received their innervation from thoracic nerve segment paralysis of the abdominal muscles would cause the diaphragm to assume a low resting position moving to our 15th question during an examination of elbow strength using manual muscle testing the patient supinates the forearm with attempting elbow flexion which of the following muscle is the most likely doing the major part of the work option a biceps brachii option b brachialis option c supinator option d brachioradialis and the answer is option a biceps brachii explanation to this question is the biceps brachii is both an elbow flexor and supinator and it is most effective as supinator with elbow flexed to 90 degree approximately the manual muscle testing position the brachialis does not cause supination only flexion the supinator does not flex the elbow the brachioradialis would move the forearm to a mid position rather than fully supinating it therefore when the elbow both flexes and supinate the biceps brachii would be most likely muscle causing this action that's all for today if you need further clarification check the description box and give your feedback in the comment box if you like this mcq session do subscribe to this channel for more videos thank you